All right, in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the concept of heating curves and how they work, basically. And I'm going to talk to you also about the difference between endothermic versus exothermic reactions within this heating curve. So what I have here is I have a very basic curve here. I'm going to uh, create a graph for you. I'm going to move this down a little bit so I have more room. Uh, but basically, I'm going to have two axes here. I'm going to have my dependent variable and my independent variable. And along this this axis over here on this black axis, I'm going to make the, the black axis on the left, I'm going to make this temperature, okay? And I'm going to use uh, degrees Celsius just because that's a very convenient uh, temperature to use when, when we're talking about phase changes. And, uh, the, you know, what I'm going to talk about here is I'm going to, I'm going to give you a demonstration using water, okay, or H2O. And, when I say water, usually we think of liquid form, but I'm just going to say H2O here because we're going to see it in three different forms. We're going to see it in, in ice, we're going to see it as a liquid, and we're going to see it as steam. And it's going to behave um, a little bit differently because all of these have different specific heats, but you know we're going to talk about transitioning from ice to liquid to steam. Okay. So this, this will be the temperature on this scale. On this scale, I'm going to talk to you about Q, and I'm going to talk about joules. It could be kilojoules. It could be calories. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We just need to pick one and go with it. So on a heating curve, we typically start down here, and we start with a certain temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the temperatures here, and I'm going to label them in black, and then I'm going to make these these lines slightly different colors to signify what's going on. So let's start at negative 25 degrees C, okay, and then I'm going to go up to uh, I'm going to go up to zero degrees C, okay, and then at some point we're going to keep jumping here, 25, 50, 75, 100 degrees C here, okay, and I'm trying to keep this scale somewhat you know uh, consistent. And then we're going to go beyond 100 degrees out here. We're going to we're going to turn this into steam. Okay, and these are important important temperatures because we use Celsius mainly to talk about phase changes. It's a, it's it's not really a convenient temperature to use when we're talking about gas laws or anything that relates to direct variation. Uh, Celsius is really kind of a useless thing. So we usually we're talking about Kelvin. But for this illustrative purpose, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use Celsius. So to begin this example, I'm going to start adding some Q to the system, okay, some heat. In other words, I'm going to put heat into the system. And by me putting heat into the system, this is going to be an endothermic example here, okay? So the way that the curve is going, we're going to follow it this way. You could follow it in any direction, but I'm going to follow it this way because I'm adding the Q down here. Okay, so just to illustrate this again, I'm going to be adding heat to the system, okay? So I'm going to have a Q down here, and I'm going to add that to our system here. So, um, you know, th imagine there's a flame here, okay, and I'm adding Q to the system. I'm adding heat to the system, right? And we're going to start out here at negative 25. So at this at this point, um, we're talking about ice, okay? This is this is a pure solid. But as I add that Q to the system, in other words, as I make this an endothermic process, I'm adding Q, right? The temperature is going to start to rise, right? And then there's going to be some point here where it reaches zero degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my little fire across here. I'm going to keep adding Q to my system as I go across here, okay? And I changed the color here. I made this purple because this is a phase change, and I want to emphasize something here. This is a this is now a mixture, and I'm going to this is going to be uh, this is going to be ice and water. It's melting, okay? So I'm still adding the Q right but now as I move along in my process here okay I keep adding more and more Q to the system right but the temperature doesn't change does not seem a little strange to you I mean shouldn't the temperature change I'm adding heat I have a flame underneath this thing right and nothing's happening right well <clears throat> the reason why the temperature doesn't change is that the heat is actually being used to separate these uh, particles of a, as a solid and break them into a liquid. So the bonds are, are being separated and, and this, this is what this is where the energy is going. In other words, uh, it, it, the energy has to do something. In this case, it's separating them into a liquid. Okay? 
So I'm going to continue to do this, right? So the reason why uh, this doesn't change temperature is is, is because of that, and the, and this is also this process is also called um, this is called fusion. Fusion is usually when we're going from a liquid to a water, but we call this fusion, and there's a latent heat uh, rela related to that. Okay, so the latent heat is the word latent means hidden. Okay, so this means hidden. And the reason it's hidden is because it's hidden in the bonds. When the bonds break up, uh, heat it, 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 that's where the heat goes. Okay, so it's not going to increase the temperature. It's just going to separate that ice into water. Okay, so that's why it's called latent heat. Okay, now I'm going to keep adding Q to the system. All of the ice will have melted at this point, and it's going to be all water. So I'm going to change the color now to green just to signify water. But what's going to happen now? If I have all water, all of the ice has melted, right? Now I have all water. What's going to happen next? Well, I'm going to keep adding my Q, but now instead of the temperature remaining constant, it's going to start climbing, right? And as I add this heat into here, right, what's going to happen is this temp this is going to rise, and I'm not I'm not making this to scale, just to clarify in terms of the slope here. Uh, but basically, I'm going to keep adding this Q, and now since I have all of an, you know all of a liquid, as I add that Q, the temperature now starts to rise. Now remember, what is temperature? Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy, and so so basically, as the temperature rises, I'm making these molecules jump around really fast inside. They're moving faster and faster and faster inside the liquid, right? So at this point now, as this is green here, okay, and this moves from zero up to 100, okay. As I move up to that point, okay, everything in here, this is just going to be water up to this point. This is water. But now the temperature is rising. So remember, I'm moving this way, okay. It's absorbing heat still, right? Because I got my little flame down here. I'm adding the heat now, right? And now it's actually, I'm causing the temperature to go up, right? Okay. So what's going to happen if I keep adding once it reaches 100? What's going to happen next? So now if I, if I start adding heat, and it starts to reach a boiling point, if I start to keep moving in this direction, in other words, I keep adding more and more heat, the temperature is going to stop going up. And it's going to remain constant again. I'm going to reach this concept here of a mixture again, okay? And this one takes a long time. And this, this, and, and the reason is it takes a lot of energy to, to get that water to leave. And so we're, we're going to have another mixture going on here. So at this point now, right, I'm going to have my mixture here, and I'm going to have uh, water and it's going to be steam. Okay, so now as I add, okay, we're going to have purely water. There we go. Water and we're going to have steam. Okay. And that that could go on for a while. I mean, that, again, that takes a long time to boil to boil off water. It takes a lot of energy. So, uh, you know, I'm going to draw that graph over to here and draw it a little bit neater this time. Okay, so as I keep adding that Q, no matter how much I keep adding, right, the temperature is not going to change, right? So now what's happening? Well, I have a mixture. I'm at 100, okay, and I'm boiling here, right? So what, what kind of heat is that? Remember we talked about this before? Is this another type of a latent heat? In other words, the temperature is not changing, so we need to be suspicious here. Well, if the temperature's not changing and I'm adding the Q, right? The Q is doing something, right? It's not just magically disappearing. What's it what's it doing now? Well, to answer that question, the Q in this case, in this case, the Q is being used to change the phase. It's being used to drive that water up into the air to make it into a steam steam molecule, right? So in other words, that Q is that is literally taking the water molecules and driving them away from the surface into the air. So that's what it's being used to do. It's the temperature doesn't increase, right? And water does not like to um, it does not like to evaporate, right? It does not like to boil. It's not it's not very easy for it to boil because it has a lot of hydrogen bonds and it makes it want to stick to itself, right? So it does not have a very high vapor pressure because the vapor pressure, it, in other words, vapor pressure is it it it, it is represents the substance pushing back on the atmosphere, right? So it has a very low vapor pressure because water doesn't wants to stay with itself because of the hydrogen bonding, okay? So this process takes a long time to occur, okay? So I'm going to move this down a little bit down here. I'm going to extend the page and I'm going to I'm just going to kind of 
write something similar down here as, as I did before, okay, in terms of uh, dealing with uh, our latent heat. So this time we have latent heat. So we have, this time we're going to call this vaporization. Okay, and uh, in, in this case, uh, this is also a latent heat. It means it's hidden again, right? Latent heat again. At latent heat, excuse me, latent heat. Okay, latent heat. And this is going to be hidden again. And again, and again, the reason it's called latent again is because it doesn't seem intuitive that we would have clarify here to use some conventional terms. This is what we would call boiling, right? And over here, this is what we would call melting. Okay. So in each of these, in each of these uh, latent processes, latent heat processes, uh, we have a constant temperature and we have a mixture. We have both of them present. There's water and steam present here. There's ice and water present here, and the temperature doesn't change. In this case, the heat is being used to separate the ice into water. In this case, the heat is being used to drive those water molecules into the air. Okay. So at some point. At some point, I'm going to keep adding enough heat to where I'm going to get I'm going to get um, all of that water to to boil off, right? So at some point, if I keep adding the Q down here, if I keep taking my Q, my little flame, and I keep adding it to it, at some point, all of that water is going to boil off, and it's just going to be steam. Okay? So what's going to happen when I just have steam here? What's going to happen next? Okay, so now. If I keep adding the heat, something interesting is going to happen here. I'm going to have all steam, right? I'm going to have all steam. But now since I'm not involved in a phase change, there's no latent heat going on, right? All of that Q now is going to drive the temperature higher, okay? So I'm continuing with my endothermic process. I'm adding heat to the system, right? And the temperature of the steam is going to shoot up, okay? Now in reality, um, uh, steam and ice have a very low specific heat. In other, they're very sensitive to to Q. Uh, and so I didn't quite draw this to scale, but it, you know, if I add just a little bit of Q, the the, sh the temperature of the steam is going to shoot up a lot. Or the, if I have a little uh, some ice, the temperature the ice is going to shoot up a lot. This is why ice cream melts very easily, right? And so you don't really see steam too much. But basically, once it becomes steam, it's very sensitive. If I add any Q, the temperature spikes up really quickly. Okay. So this is the basic concept now. Now, let me just give you some equations to associate with this. In all of these cases, I added Q, but how do I describe what's going on with the Q? Well, very basically, if I'm dealing with ice, okay, the Q here is going to equal is going to equal mc delta t. And again, I'm just going to keep adding these processes up where m is the mass, c is the specific heat, delta t is the temperature change. If I'm dealing with something that's melting, the Q is going to be M L F. L F is what's called the uh, latent heat of fusion, and M is the amount of mass that boiled off, that melted in this case, right? So it's completely dependent upon how much mass melted. That's what's. So if you want to know how much heat I added, you, you simply need to ask yourself how much of the ice melted. That will tell you. It has nothing to do with temperature change. You see that? Then when I'm back here again, I'm into with water, I'm into MC delta T for Q. Now, you may think I'm writing the same equation twice here, right? You may be like, well, why did you write that twice again? Because they have different specific heats. So what ice is different than water. Ice is about one half of water. Water is is double of, of ice and steam basically. So now I go back to here to my boiling point, my boiling example here. In this case, the Q of the boiling is going to equal to the mass times LV, which is the latent heat of vaporization. And that's going to simply be a function of how much mass boiled off. So if you want to know how much heat did I add, how much mass disappeared out of the water, right? That's going to tell me. And LV is some constant latent heat of vaporization. Okay, so that's, that's a pretty high constant because it takes a lot of energy to boil something off. Then once I get back to, to pure steam again, now I'm back to my MC delta T, okay? And a lot of times people call that MCAT, MC delta T is a short term. But again, I have a different specific heat here for steam. It's, it's about half of water. 
So water is just about twice of ice, it's about twice of steam. Okay, so if I wanted to find the total heat required to raise it to some temperature, let's say that my temperature up here, then uh, basically I would use all of these, the, the change of the temperatures from 175 to 100 here. Again, this is 100, this is 100 here, this is 0, this is 0, and this is negative 25 down here. Okay, so now you have all of the, the, the steps or the building blocks in place to begin to do uh, some, some heating curve analysis with uh, an endothermic reaction. But what would happen if the opposite was happening? What would happen if I was starting with steam and I wanted to go all the way down to ice? The only thing that would happen in that case is that you would reverse these arrows and you would start up here and you would just start moving backwards along the curve. So this would, this would move backwards like this, okay? This would move, this would move backwards like this down here and then eventually you know this this would keep moving down here this is like if you were cooling something off right so this one would flip here and then finally down here if I can get these arrows to behave this would go all the way back down to ice so you can do the reverse process here. This is reversible. I mean, th this is a completely reversible process. So in this case, as I'm going down, this is now becomes exothermic. It's giving off heat. Okay. So when steam, when water, when when steam turns back into water, it condenses on your hand. Let's say you feel that burn. That's because it's releasing heat back, right? And then as you cool something down, as water begins to freeze in this case if it's going this way it actually releases heat in that direction okay so if we're going the other direction okay we wouldn't call this boiling anymore right we would call this condensation just to clarify here this would be condensation if you're going the other way okay and this one down here instead of being called melting we would now call this freezing and this also gives off heat okay so when water freezes it releases heat and this is a principle that a lot of agricultural uh, people use and farmers and, and produce growers they use this when there's a freeze what they actually do is they take uh, water and they create this big ice blanket and when the water freezes it releases heat and it actually makes it warmer than it would if there was no ice there I know that sounds counterintuitive, but that's actually a process that farmers use to combat uh, very cold temperatures. So instead of the ice, you know, instead of the air getting down to 20, 20 degrees, let's say in Fahrenheit or, or, or negative Celsius, it might only get down to slightly below uh, freezing when you're constantly having ice free, when you're constantly having water freeze, it's releasing heat. So that's actually a very true uh, principle that, that can be used in a practical application. All right, so that's that's my overview here. Uh, I hope that that gives you um, at least the building blocks here to begin to understand how these curves work. And uh, now we can go forward and do some more uh, sophisticated examples, you know, using calculations when we're talking about moving from different uh, phases to another. All right, that's all I've got for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.